This game has got me. See, you're smart. So, do you want to play? Let's do this crazy thing. Here we go. Adventure Cape. He's solving riddles great and small. Adventure Cape. Adventure games, he loves them all. Every day is a new quest. Exploring north, south, east, and west. Point and click to find the answers that we seek. Adventure Cape. Hello there, fellow adventurers. Oh, that's, that's very good. Come on, keep going. Today we're going to be looking at Arc of Time. Or the other way around. Oh. This is a third-person adventure game developed by Italian company Trecision and published in 1997 by Ice. Ice, Ice, baby. What are you doing? <laughs> the story opens on a ship somewhere in the Atlantic, where a famous professor of archaeology and his team of intrepid explorers are on an expedition to find the fabled city of Atlantis, which, as we know from Atlantis Lost Tales, once looked like this. The adventurous adventurers venture into the ocean depths in their submersible and are greeted by a glowing dolphin who guides them to Atlantis, but suddenly their craft malfunctions and they crash right in front of the walls of the sunken city. Now our hero makes his dramatic entrance. Kendall, you look exhausted. Have all those football matches you've reported on finally got to you? Not really. It's actually a great job. Well, maybe hero isn't quite the right word for our man Richard Kendall, a sports journalist who is sent by his editor on an important mission to find the missing Atlantis seekers. Kendall isn't too happy about leaving the comforts of his London home. Chief, I'm happy doing the sports reviews here in snowy England. The Caribbean sounds great, but this is a job for a more seasoned reporter. Isn't there somebody else you could send? He's really not the adventurous sort at all, getting spooked by the sight of blood. I'm shivering. There are still blood stains. And refusing to touch firearms. Forget it. It could be dangerous. So rather than being a mighty pirate like Guybrush Threepwood, He's just a big girl's blouse. First stop on our journey is the Caribbean, where we meet a psychic painter. And what is it that you are painting right now? I'm painting your future. Hey, what are you painting there? A dragon. Yeah, that's my future? Yes. Is that a good future? A very good future. <laughs> The main objective of this part of the game is to catch a crab. Snappy little things, crabs. The crab's name is Tweezers and is the beloved pet of this old sea dog. Tweezers is my good luck white crab. Without Tweezers, I don't go anywhere. So remember fellow adventurers, never leave home without Tweezers. Oh, Tweezers, my friend! Where have you been? What are you waiting for, kid? Quick, let's go! With the return of Tweezers, the sailor takes us to the place where the explorers went missing, and we find a giant megalithic portal. I'm curious to see what's on the other side. I'm curious too, aren't you? No. Maybe our trusty press pass will work. Like this, I won't get anything done. Oh well, looks like we'll have to do some more traveling to get in there. After performing the Herculean task of catching the crab, now we take on the dangerous business of milking the cow. Come on, Carolina, keep going. According to Kendall though, he's mostly just wasting time. I'm only wasting my time here. He doesn't even have enough time to sleep. I'm wasting time with insignificant things like sleep. I should keep moving. Turns out there's more at stake than just finding the professor. These two shifty looking guys have apparently discovered a machine that can control the weather and cause worldwide destruction. So Kendall mustn't waste any time before any more stained glass windows get struck by lightning. Next stop is Easter Island, home of the Easter Bunny. No it's not. 
No? No. How do you know? It's called Easter Island because it was discovered on Easter Sunday 1722. Oh, is that right? That's right. Oh. As we all know, Easter Island is famous for its Stonehead statues. It's only natural to wonder how the women looked. This is just one example of the often stilted dialogue and awkward attempts at humor. If the mountain will not come to Muhammad, Muhammad must go to the mountain. What about me? My name is Kendall. There are also times when the dialogue gets cut off. Maybe it still works, but it would fit better near Tutankhamun. By this point, we've already collected a jumble of items. I'm more sure than ever. If I lose my job, I will become a junk dealer. The majority of the game's puzzles are inventory based, and so all of these seemingly mundane items have a use. The most memorable puzzle for me is in Algeria, home of the dromedary. Is it a dromedary or a camel? I think it's a camel. No, wait. Maybe it's a dromedary. Well, there's a way to figure out what it is, and it has something to do with the hump. Two humps? One hump? It's a dromedary, I think. So, is it a dromedary or a camel? Well, a camel has two humps. Yes. A dromedary, just one. Oh, okay. Anyway, to solve this puzzle, let's consult the unofficial hint book. Only problem is, it's in German. So, my German Fraulein here is going to translate for us. Mit dieser im Gepäck kehrt ihr über die Karte zurück nach Afrika und ins Tuaregdorf. Beachtet im Anfangsbereich das Dromedar auf der linken Seite. Benutzt mit diesem Tier die eben angefertigte falsche Schlange, worauf das Dromedar panikartig die Flucht ergreift. Okay, so what does all that mean? Snake? Ja. Yeah. Drumtree? Aha. Uh -huh. Bye bye. Okay, great, we solved that puzzle. But there's plenty more mysteries to solve which sometimes requires some diligent pixel hunting. Otherwise, you could miss something important like this strange object here. Richard reports back to his editor in London. You've discovered something hot. Like what? Some ancient recipe for Stegosaurus burgers? Hey, how about going for some Stegosaurus burgers right now? Hmm, I feel more like rat croquettes. Oh, rat croquettes, gross. No, they're yummy. Especially when they hard. Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm. If you have a strange craving for rat croquettes, you can visit the Algerian butcher. This is also where you find out the sad fate of the dromedary. Camel? Dromedary? Camel. Dromedary? Camel. When Richard unleashes the fury of a jar of termites on the meat, The butcher loses all hope and gives this Oscar-worthy performance. Poor me! My wife will leave me! My neighbors won't talk to me anymore! Poor me! I have to beg on the streets! Poor me! Poor me! I, I'm faint! At this point in the adventure, we're bouncing back and forth between Algeria, Easter Island, Stonehenge, and the Caribbean. How does Richard afford all this? Well, if time is money, then he certainly doesn't waste it. I'm wasting my time with this simple box. I'm wasting time with this shelf. If I need to waste time, this is the place. Needle anyone? All this globetrotting is necessary though, because some items you find in one place can have a use somewhere on the other side of the world. For example, I was totally stumped until I realized that the lockpick I found in a loaf of bread in Algeria opens this door all the way over at Stonehenge. What treasures lie on the other side of this door? Ah, telephone. Unfortunately, I don't have time to waste calling sex lines. I still haven't found the professor. Well, he may not be calling sex lines, but Richard does feel the desire to stand around listening to this guy having a sweet talk with his wife. You have a little surprise for me? I've got a little surprise for you, too. <laughs> no, darling. You first. Come on. Come on. Tell me what my little pussycat did today that's so special. Tell me. Tell your big, strong husband. So, you may be wondering if we ever find out what happened to the professor. 
Well, in order to answer that question, we must first find the sacred words to open this mysterious door. Hmm, I wonder what the secret words could be. What about open sesame? Open sesame! Enter, stranger. Hey, you've been looking at the hint book, haven't you? No. It's obvious. Inside, we find a machine that plays video logs of Atlantean scientists. Or they could be rappers with names such as Bizarre and Fanta Pot. It looks like they age considerably from one recording to another. No sign from the base. Still no sign from the base. And so we come to the final stage of our journey, the Yucatan. Richard continues to demonstrate his unique brand of humor by talking to a stone head. Nice to meet you. My name is Kendall. Not very talkative, is he? Unfortunately, he also unwittingly insults the native culture. You don't deserve to know. Come on, do you want to help me or not? I've come from the other side of the world to this godforsaken place where you can't even find a hot dog. What, they don't have hot dogs in the Yucatan? How about Stegosaurus burgers? I prefer red croquettes. Oh, gross, red croquettes? Didn't we already do this before? Oh yeah, you're right, we did. Anyway, despite the lack of hot dogs, Richard somehow manages to blunder through and finally obtains what he needs to open the portal to Atlantis. This is it, we're about to find out what Atlantis looks like after all these years. I wonder if it's retained any of the splendor of old, the lofty towers, the flying ships, and the glory of Atlantean civilization. Hmm, not quite what I expected. In any case, Richard finally finds the missing professor and his colleague Helen, and contemplates their predicament. Well, if I happen to have some sadomasochistic fantasies, I do have the handcuffs. Where did Helen get to? Well, I do have the handcuffs. Where did my German Fraulein get to? Hey, come back! Of course, the story has a happy ending where Richard, Helen and the Professor escape from Atlantis just before it's destroyed once again when the weather machine backfires. For some reason, these cutscenes are subtitled rather than voice acted, which makes it feel strangely out of place. Is this the happy ending they promised me? I protest! Ah! Well, in summary, this game is a bit of a hodgepodge. What a hodgepodge. What is it supposed to be? It's not exactly a timeless classic like The Secret of Monkey Island, but Archetime is a quirky and fun adventure with some traditional puzzle solving and off-the-wall humor. Look! Lots of rugs! I'm in rug heaven! Oh joy! Rugs beyond my wildest dreams! Somebody slap me! I'm out of control! I'm gonna give it six rubber chickens with pulleys in the middle. Wow, look at all these rugs, huh? Yeah. Look, lots and lots of rugs. Wow, look at wow. these! Look at all these rugs. Oh. This is rug heaven! 